You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. We're going to be talking about how to lower your blood sugar and burn more body fat with a very specific type of exercise. One of the reasons why I love going into the research on exercise is because we have an inflated viewpoint of what exercise and movement is in this country and in the Western-based world. And the problem is that unless we begin to correct what exercise and movement looks like, we're not going to be able to keep up with dis-ease in this country. So just to give you a few statistics right now, that type 2 diabetes, which is essentially adult onset diabetes, and now believe it or not, many children and teenagers are developing this risk as well. But just in the United States alone, type 2 diabetes accounts for over $376 billion in healthcare expenditure. And then also worldwide, it's 12%. So when I was over in India, we saw more and more type 2 diabetes on the rise. It had never been like that just 20 years before that. It is a definitive change in the way people are using their bodies, which we're going to get into, the exercise that they're no longer doing or moving with, and also the food that we're eating. But here's the thing, type 2 diabetes If you had a child, or you listening to this, were born in the year 2000 or after, there's a 32.8% chance, if you're a male, that you will get type 2 diabetes. And there's an almost 40%, a 38.5% for females that you will develop diabetes. And these are insane statistics. And that is because type 2 diabetes is preventable and in many cases reversible. But here's the worst part, is that type 2 diabetes leads to other health-based issues. So it increases your overall morbidity and mortality due to factors such as heart disease, stroke, blindness, kidney failure, foot problems, periodontal disease, and it has a massive impact on your overall quality of life. So I have a great research document. Again, this is all published research, and it's taken into account 58 different studies on how to better regulate your blood sugar. And yes, if you better regulate your blood sugar, you will absolutely burn more body fat and you will be less likely to be overweight because there are not a lot of people who are at a healthy weight and have type 2 diabetes. It's just not the majority of people. Can it happen? Yes, it can. It absolutely can. Is it rare? Yes, it is. It is much more rare. Please don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If we help you to lose the weight and take it off and eat it in a healthy way in order to do that and move your body, believe me, you will be at far less risk for type 2 diabetes. And if you have type 2 diabetes, we're seeing that it is potentially reversible for many, many people. Okay? So I'm not saying come off your medication right now. I'm not saying that you shouldn't work with your PCP. What I'm saying is there's a lot we can do. And especially since type 2 diabetes may really by the year 2030 infect, and I will use this because it is literally a worldwide epidemic that it's infecting over a third of people in this country. Potentially, it'll be one out of two in the future, unless we do something. So we can do something. We know what we are able to do. And just through exercise alone, even if you just didn't change your diet, although we want you to do that because diet is one of the faster ways to reverse this. But if we were to add an exercise, I want to share some of these studies with you. And then I'm going to actually give you the exercise program. And I think you're really going to like this because honestly, it's about... 40 total minutes of exercise per week. 
Should you do more than that? The answer is yes. Would you get results in just 40 minutes per week? About two to three 15 minute to 20 minute sessions per week? Yes. So that's the thing. We can't keep saying there's no time. We can't. All right. I've been in the fitness industry, the health industry, the functional medicine industry a long time. The excuse is that we don't have time. I've used it myself. So believe me, I get it and I understand. And I understand now more than ever. You know, I've got two young girls. I've got a French bulldog. He takes up time. You know, we have family responsibilities. There's work. There's all sorts of different things, right? It's like every other week, there's some event and meeting and school play going on and there's after school activities. So I get it. There's a lot going on. But we need for you to carve out 15 to 20 minutes three times a week minimum. And I know you can do that because I know that you can wake up 15 to 20 minutes earlier because I know that you can go to bed 15 to 20 minutes earlier. And it's going to be a difference maker. I would not ask you to do this if it was not going to be a game changer for you. And once you hear the research, and I'm going to link up the research, I'm actually, it's a beautiful PDF document that you can read through yourself too. If you're a personal trainer, if you're a doctor, if you're an integrative health practitioner, and you love going deeper into the research, then great. I'm going to link that up for you. And you can see all the different 58, you can see the meta-analysis of basically 58 different studies showing you over and over, this works, this works, this works. And then you can take it and you can use it with your clients and your patients and then everybody wins. And again, you don't have to be an integrative health practitioner or a doctor, et cetera, to be able to share this information with other people. That's what it's all about. Share it on social media, share the podcast, tell people about it of what they can do because this is basically free. Like These things are basically free to do. They really are. I mean, you have to eat food anyways, right? So could you eat more vegetables instead of more pasta and breads and things like that? Absolutely, right? I mean, you absolutely can't. You have to eat food. You choose one over the other. And again, I'm simplifying things. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying that it's that easy, but it can be, right? You could do a 21-day functional medicine detox to kick you off. Then you could continue on with that smoothie in the morning. You could do the fatlosity-based system that we've developed. That's going to help. But let's add in this movement because here's the thing. Out of all the stats that I read, and the stats are really telling, There's one that is very warped. It is warped because in the way that we look at movement, it is not exercise in our society. So this is the stat. In the United States, only 39% of people with diabetes are active. Okay, so 39% of people with diabetes are active compared to 58% of those without the condition. So you're telling me that about 40% of people with diabetes exercise? And you're telling me that about 60% of people who don't have diabetes exercise. And I'm going to get to this, but the studies just aren't on people with diabetes. It's on people without type 2 diabetes as well. So here's the thing. That is not exercise. They might be using walking as a barometer. And you know what are they even saying? Is it 20 minutes a day? Like What are we using as active? Because I can tell you right now, statistics is about 13% of, in just the United States, about 13% of people have a gym membership. Maybe a little greater amount exercise and work out, you know, that don't have a gym membership. But also keep in mind, out of the 13% of people that have a gym membership, utilization in gyms is at a maximum of about 33%. And again, I've been in the fitness industry for quite some time. So that means that you're seeing about a third of the people out of those 13% that have the gym membership, right? So I want to really think about this in a different way. When we walk, we are moving, we are active, and we need that. So if you have type 2 diabetes, or if you're a human being that breathes, you should get 10,000 steps per day of movement. That's activity, okay? We want that. Now, I have many podcasts on this and working your way up. If you're doing 3,000 steps a day now, don't go right away to 10,000. Just work up by another 1,000 steps per day each week. So basically, if you're at 3,500 steps now, great. Next week, do 4,500 each day. The following week, 5,500. If you start to get a little too exhausted, keep it at 5,500. Let your body adapt, okay? It's it's not a race. We've got nowhere to go. We're hanging out here, right? And then the next week, 6,500, and then you get it until you get to 10,000 steps per day. 10,000 is not the limit, but it's a good amount. It's about 100 minutes or so a day of walking. Now, you think about that. 100 minutes a day of walking, that's a lot. Not really. It's just over an hour and a half of being on your feet out of the 16 hours that you're awake. So out of 16 hours you're awake, Can you be active on your feet for an hour and a half of those? Hopefully the answer is yes, because you can see how sedentary we've become. And I've done a previous podcast that when you are seated, you are not able to 
utilize glucose in the same way. Meaning that if you are seated, you don't absorb the glucose into your cells as well, and you're more likely to gain body fats. These things are important to remember. We are meant to be active. We are descendants of hunter-gatherers, right? You would have, and this wasn't for every single tribe and group, but you would have a lot of the males go out and, and hunt and try to find animal or whatever it might be. And then you'd have a lot of the women from the tribe gather and get the majority of the food, believe it or not, because a lot of times there would be no anything caught on a hunt. And then there were many other groups too that men and women shared the responsibilities. And so it's not necessarily about tasks and things like that, but keep in mind, people were on their feet. That's what we're talking about. People were on their feet for a what what's said somewhere around 18,000 steps per day. Okay. Now again, can we corroborate that fully? Probably not, but we can also look at some of the more untouched tribes that we've seen in different parts of the world or on islands. And when looking at those particular groups of people, we can see that that's around where the average steps are. Minimum of 13,000, more like 18,000 steps. So you know, now what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about being on your feet for three hours or so per day. So walking is the first step. We need that. But now let's move on to exercise. And I just want to share this with you. And then I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. This is not going to be complicated. And 15 minutes, that's all that I need from you. 15 minutes, three times a week. That's it. And I'm going to share with you exactly why you'll probably get it within the first three sentences. So I'm just going to read this specifically. I'm going to link this up. Today's podcast is at stephencabral.com forward slash 1469. So head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1469. And uh, this is on lowering blood sugar and burning more fat with a specific type of exercise that I'm about to share with you right now. Okay. So quoting the study, six studies of non-diabetics, again, we're pulling from many different studies. There's 58 different analyzed, but six studies of non-diabetics. Okay. So we're talking about just regular people, no diabetes, 51 males, 14 females, requiring seven and a half to 20 minutes per week of high intensity exercise are reviewed. Two weeks of sprint interval training, you'll see that sometimes as SIT, and you'll see high intensity exercise as HIE. Just so that you know, when you're reading these studies, I like to demystify them. HIE is high intensity exercise. SIT is sprint interval training. We'll get into that in a moment. But two weeks of sprint interval training increased insulin sensitivity up to three days post-intervention. 12 weeks near maximal interval training, total exercise time of 40 minutes a week, improved blood glucose to a similar extent at running at 65% of VO2 max for 150 minutes per week. I'll stop there for one second. Okay, so we have now 12 weeks near maximal interval running, 40 minutes per week, improved blood glucose to a similar level of aerobic-based running, at about 65%, which is most people are doing their aerobics, somewhere between 60 and 75% for 150 minutes a week. So now we have about, what's the math on that? That's about 40, 80, 120. Well, it's about 30%, right? 25, 30% of the time required. That's, That's pretty amazing when you look at it like that. And so that is broken down to about two to three shorter interval training or sprint interval trainings per week. I'll tell you exactly what sprint interval training is in just a moment because there's a very specific duration. It's not two minutes. It's not 10 seconds. It's not a Tabata. I'm going to go through that in a second. So really interesting. So we can get really good blood glucose improvements similar to that of doing almost 4X the amount of time. Okay. Eight studies. This is new. Eight studies of diabetics, 41 type 1 and 22 type 2 diabetics were reviewed. Six were of a single exercise session with 44 seconds to 13 minutes of high intensity exercise, and the others were two and seven weeks duration with 20 minutes and two minutes a week of high intensity exercise, respectively. With type 1 and type 2 diabetes, blood glucose was generally higher in up to two hours after high intensity exercise compared to the controls which would be regular aerobic exercise. With type 1 diabetes, blood glucose decreased from midnight 
to 6 a.m. following high-intensity exercise the previous morning. With type 2 diabetes, a single session improved postprandial blood glucose for 24 hours, while a two-week program reduced the average blood glucose by 13% at 48 to 72 hours after exercise and also increased GLUT4 by 369%. Okay, what does all that mean? Well, first, let's start with GLUT4. You may not have heard of that before, but let me tell you what it is first. It's insulin-regulated glucose transporter. And what that means is that you are able to shuttle glucose, which is in the bloodstream, into, well, body fat, but we hope mostly that it's being shuttled into the muscles. Okay, so that's where we want it. So we want the body to soak it up to be used by the mitochondria and to be used by the cells itself. So we've got that glucose transporter, right? Glucose transporter type four to able to take and improve insulin sensitivity to get the glucose out of the bloodstream and into the muscles. Okay. So that is that part of it. Now let's go back because there's some more interesting work that we saw here. When doing high intensity exercise, we see that we're able to improve blood glucose for the next two to three days. That's the remarkable part. That's what we're missing in terms of why high-intensity interval training, high-intensity resistance training is so powerful at transforming the body and burning body fat as well, besides for diabetes. Again, you can look at this multiple ways. Because here's the thing. If you have less glucose, meaning we want a normal level of glucose in the bloodstream, 75 to 95 or so, if you're using your glucometer. But we have to understand this. This is very important. If we have normal levels of blood sugar, we tap into more body fat called lipolysis. We're able to break down more body fat rather than using sugar as a fuel source. So again, it does not mean that carbs are the enemy. It doesn't mean that all you know these other things are the enemy. What it means is that we're supposed to look at a full system of how the body works in order to burn body fat, diet, exercise, stress reduction, right? Because higher cortisol levels, as I've shown you before, increase blood sugar levels, which increases insulin, which increases inflammation, which increases body fat storage. And I've got a video on that if you'd like to watch it at stephencabral.com forward slash BRMI. So here's what we want to think about. Well, let me go over one more study and then I'm going to give you the exact plan to take with you. And again, if you're a personal trainer, if you're an integrative health practitioner, you can use this with your clients as well. So additional study, this was found that 20 minutes of near maximal running, 40 minutes of total exercise time per week. So basically 20 minutes uh, near maximal time, 40 minutes total exercise time per week for 12 weeks was as effective as 150 minutes of running at 65, which I shared with you before. But here's the thing. It improved both fasting glucose and blood glucose two hours after the ingestion of 50, 75 grams of glucose. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us this, that if you are eating carbohydrates, which is not a bad thing, again, you're probably not even eating 75 grams of just straight glucose, resistance exercise, high intensity exercise allows you to be able to utilize those carbohydrates, that glucose in the bloodstream. And that's really important to look at that. And it was done in essentially just 40 minutes of total exercise time per week. Okay. So the, although the guidelines right now, which I do recommend clinical guidelines are 150 to 210 minutes per week of exercise is actually much higher. It's about, well, yeah, no, that's about right. About 210 or so. It's about 30 minutes a day and that's 210 minutes a week. So, you know, if we look at the 210 minutes a week, I do like that. That's, I've given that before too. You know, really what we're looking at is 40 minutes, five days a week. And that that's the perfect amount of exercise. It's a lot if you're starting from not there, right? If you're starting from not a lot of movement, that's a lot. So we don't want to start there yet. But we know now that we could potentially do 40 minutes to start, right? And if so, if you're not exercising right now, 15 to 20 minutes a session, and I would like that because I'd like you to do a little warm up, and then I would like a 15 minute workout. So I'm going to give you that right now. Here's how they did this in the studies. So it's always nice to say we could do 
other things. Like we can do resistance training. We can do all sorts of different things, which I highly recommend because I've given shows as well. Then in the long term, in order to be able to burn body fat and maintain a healthy physique, you need to be doing strength training with high intensity resistance training, I prefer, two to three times a week. Okay. So that's that's the goal. But in this study, it showed this. Three to five minute warm up, and then 30 seconds of maximal effort, typically on an upright exercise bike. And I've, if you want to see a bike that I recommend, which is pretty inexpensive, just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and just type in upright bike. And it's, again, it's about $250. It's a adjustable spin bike. We can adjust the seat back and forth, up and down, handlebars back and forth. We've even used it at our studio before. Now, there are many other bikes you can get. You can get a Schwinn Airdyne bike, which is amazing, right? So you could do that for sure. You could get a, a Peloton. You could get whatever bike that you want, but this is a far less expensive version. And then if you find yourself using it, great. Then you might upgrade to a fancier bike if you choose to in the future. So here's the thing though. How do we do it? Okay. Well, here's what we're going to do. Three to five minute warm up, And then we're going to do what's called a Wingate test. And really all it is is this. It's four to six 30 second sprints followed by four minutes of rest. That's really what we're looking at. So if we do a 30 second sprint, we're just going to move slowly after that on the bike for about four minutes. That's it. That's really all that we're doing. So if we look at that, and we just say the total then is going to be about five minutes per sprint. If we did four, we're at 20 minutes, right? So we're not looking at a massive workout. Three minutes to do some, maybe some plank, some lateral lunges. And again, if you want to find a dynamic warm up of mine, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and type in dynamic warm up and you'll find those podcasts as well. So that is it. Now, if you have a little bit more time, fine. But four, 30 second sprints. And I would say you could even do three to four minutes. You could even cut back by one minute on that rest if you wanted to, as long as you feel like you were recovered. It might take a couple weeks. You might actually need that full four minutes or even more. But then you might be able to cut back just a little, not a lot, because the body needs to recover to be able to go at 100%. So that's the thing is like you actually want to move that body, crank it up, and then be able to go at 100%. So typically, even if you want to do the warm up on the bike, that would be fine. So usually for my warm up for sprints, we're going at about 60 to 70% for the first sprint, then about 85, 90%, and then all out for that next sprint. So again, if, if to make this super easy, here's what I want you to do. Okay. If you're a personal trainer, if you're doing a resistance workout, do your resistance workout first. Okay. So do 20, 30 minutes of your resistance workout. Great. Love it. Absolutely. Keep that going. Then at the end of that, add just general warm up here on the bike. You're going to do one sprint at about 60% or so, the next one at about 85, 90%, and then go all out for another three to four sprints. And that's it. Like That'll be your workouts. Now, if you're just doing this on your own, say, listen, you told me I could do 15 minutes three times a week. And I say, yes, get on the bike. You're going to get those legs moving just at a normal pace for about two minutes or so, then do a 30 second sprint at about 60%. Do your next sprint at about 90%. You only need a couple minutes between those because you're not going all out. And then blast, go at 100%. Okay, 100%. Keep yourself safe though. We don't want any injuries. We don't want any pulled hamstrings or muscles or hip flexors. And then you'll rest your four minutes. You'll do three more of those. Okay, so that's going to give you about a 20 minute workout. If you can't do the 20, cut back by one sprint. You're going to be okay. All right, so that's the thing is that we can go all out sprinting for 30 seconds, really cranking that body. Believe me, you will feel it after 15 seconds. You're like, I still have another 15 seconds. That's what it should feel like. And that's how you're going to get the results. Now, the nice thing is this. Let's say you did this in the morning. You're done for the day. You're done for the day. Now, do I want more exercise in the future? Yes, I do. But this is going to be good to improve blood glucose levels for the next two to three days. So now let's get to the last piece of advice. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Keep a day in between your workouts, but not more than two. Why? Because now the research is showing, the research has shown, I've I've mentioned this before, but two to three days later, two to three days later, you're still getting the effects from that workout, from those high intensity exercise sprints. That's the amazing thing. 
So you can really, you can enjoy the foods that you love. Again, we're trying to eat healthy foods here. You can still enjoy a once a week cheat meal or so. And I, and I tell you, that's the day to do your exercise, right? Do your sprints the day you're going to have a cheat meal that night. It works so much better. You actually replenish your glucose levels and you're able to better utilize the glucose that comes in your body from those carbs and starches. So all right, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, add it on to your current workout or simply do it whenever you get time for about 15, 20 minutes during the day. It's your starting point. It will work. The research shows it. And I'm going to link up the research at stephencabral.com forward slash one, four, six, nine. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or a lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the equal life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.